Hey guys, Nintendrew here. Nintendo has certainly been enjoying the ongoing market success of the Switch, and it seems like other manufacturers might have started taking notice. In fact, earlier this year, Sony actually filed a patent for a new handheld device that looks a bit familiar. And more recently, a certain new gaming tablet has caught my eye. Enter the JXD Singularity Tablet. After my recent review of the GPD Win system, Gearbest was kind enough to send this new device in for review, and to me this seems like a direct response to the Switch, and at a very similar price point. So how does it stack up? Well, in this video we'll take a look at this new device, uh, we'll check out how well it performs, and I'll compare it with the established heavy hitter. So let's get to it. Alright, so just before I get started I want to mention that this review is coming about a week late because I've been getting over a head cold, so yes, uh, this device has been covered by a whole host of other YouTubers at this point, but I just wanted to jump in and give my two cents and uh, hopefully give some insight from my side. That being said, one thing that I thought was interesting is nobody has seemed to compare it to the Switch, and to me the connection was immediately apparent. This handheld is right around the $300 price point, just like the Switch. They're very similar in size. And although the JXD tablet doesn't have removable controllers or a dock per se, it does feature, very prominently on the top of the unit, a mini HDMI port for TV play. And uh, of course, because it is an Android tablet, it will work with pretty much any Bluetooth gamepad. So it seems to me at the very least that this manufacturer has taken some cues from Nintendo's hybrid beast and is trying to hit a sort of similar market. So let's talk about the form factor. I've got to say, this is probably my favorite thing about this new device. The grips feel similar to those of the Xbox One or Xbox 360 controller, and the whole thing has a nice weight to it. It certainly feels a bit more ergonomic than the, uh, the Joy-Con controllers, but that being said, this thing is significantly thicker than its big end counterpart, uh, and it is certainly not going to be quite as easy to slip into a case and bring with you on the go. I mean, this thing is pretty chunky. <laughs> so what about the screen? Well, the JXD tablet actually has a bit of an edge here. It's actually got a full 1920 by 1200 pixel display, although I will say this has kind of a strange side effect. When you're using an HDMI cable to play on the TV, everything ends up a bit squished because it's trying to fit 1920 by 1200 pixels onto a display with a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. This may not bother some people, but for me this is a really odd and bothersome shortcoming. But regardless, when playing as a handheld, the screen is great. No complaints. As I mentioned before, this tablet is running Android. Uh, it's Android Lollipop, a little bit dated, but not too far gone. You may notice my home screen looks a little different than it might on the product page or in other reviews. That's because one of the first things I did was to install the Google Now launcher because uh, I much prefer it to the standard pre-installed launcher that came with this thing. A big marketing point for the JXD tablet is its use as an emulation machine. In that regard, it performs about as well as other comparable Android tablets, with the additional plus of having a controller built into the unit. Now one thing I definitely don't want to forget to mention is that many other reviewers have noted that this machine seems to have a pretty nasty input lag when it comes to emulation, with no real solution. This really struck me as an odd problem for a device like this to have, especially because it's basically built for emulators, so I decided to do a little research into the issue. Fortunately, the system comes pre-installed with an input test app, so we can take a look at the raw input from the controller. Immediately I noticed that this lag seems to be non-existent within this test app, so naturally I assumed the input lag was introduced by the emulator itself. What most people would do is use the system's built-in emulators and assume that they would be configured for use right out of the box. However, I decided to install a separate Super Nintendo emulator as an example to see if that might mitigate the input lag. Oddly enough, there are some application packages for alternate emulators just sitting on the device's internal storage, so I picked one of these and booted up a game. And sure enough, the input lag was gone. So it seems like a poor choice that the stock emulators perform less than ideally, but at least it can be fixed by installing your own apps. Like many other gaming devices from these Chinese wholesale websites, uh, this tablet comes preloaded with the Happy Chick emulator uh, app, and my best advice is to just stay away from those if you're hoping to get the best performance. Speaking of performance, I did also test this tablet with some of the more taxing titles available for Android devices, just to see how well it could handle itself. Overall, it seems to run most games just fine, with the occasional drop in frame rate. At the end of the day, this is an Android tablet and not a gaming console, so it really comes down to what sort of device you're looking for. Aside from the input lag issue, which I was able to circumvent, I did want to bring up one other kind of bizarre issue that I had with the unit. Uh, I'm not sure if this is a problem with the device as a whole or just with mine, but I figured it was worth bringing up anyway. For some reason, the camera on the tablet has a really strong red tint over everything in the viewport until it focuses on something green, at which point it behaves like normal. Just a really strange quirk I noticed that might impact someone's decision. 
Anyway, all things considered, as far as tablets go, I really like the direction this thing is going. Uh, I love that we're seeing other companies take a cue from Nintendo in their designs, and competition is almost always good for us as consumers. Now, is the JXD tablet a true competitor to the Switch? I'm not so sure. It's definitely a pretty cool tablet with some neat features, but it's also got its fair share of issues and shortcomings. And at the end of the day, this is an Android tablet and this is a console, so it really depends on what you're in the market for. With the issues I highlighted and the greater than $300 price point, I can't wholeheartedly recommend this new device for anyone, but if you're still interested in checking it out, I will have a link in the description below. Thanks so much for watching this new review. Please do let me know in the comments what you think of this new JXD tablet, and if you like this sort of video. Feel free to share it with any friends who might find it interesting, and otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye. Hey guys, thanks again for checking out this review and for sticking it out to the end. Keep your eyes peeled this next week. I've got a really awesome new project in the works that should be hitting YouTube very soon, and you won't want to miss it. So if you haven't already, please do consider subscribing to Nintendrew, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Thanks.